Hi, this is Kurt Doolittle. I thought uh, since yesterday was pretty successful and I want to get a little more practice at this, I'd do another Q&A today. So uh, that's what we're doing. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the um, new right. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know how this is going to go because the uh, place that I'm hosting this has incredibly bad taste in music and they tend to play it too loud. Right now I've got a bit of silence and I'm hoping I can convince them to keep it that way. Um, now, uh, you know that I, prob I position the new right as um, the spectrum of all... Um, all of us from the, uh, my rather analytic sort of perspective down to the alt-right. And so I, I see the new right as the transition of the old right into, uh, excuse me, as us ab abandoning the hopefulness of the old right, or the wishful thinking of the old right, and uh, instead focus and in becoming the hopeless right, or the resigned right, or the uh, right that has accepted the fact that uh, the, 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 the desire of the uh, Western man to believe that the aristocracy of everyone is possible, we've just abandoned it uh, at each level of our classes. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, who's laughing at me? Somebody's laughing at me. Okay, I don't know. Um, uh, so t today, on and off, that's the topic I'm going to cover, is the, is the uh, new right uh, in the class structure. Now, um, I'm going to outline this as uh, the hopeless right. Yeah, well, it, we're the hopeless. We've lost all hope, and, and the left will learn, and we've lost our our it's like the parent who gives up on his child when he says actually i tried really hard but i made a loser and it's time to it's time to throw in the towel um and i think that's what the right has to do or we have done is uh the new right and the alt right and the various uh conservative libertarians that are slowly becoming us um uh the uh, we've abandoned the belief or the hope that there's anybody's going to learn, and those of us who've been this in this position all the uh, for a long time, we have uh, gotten to where we say, well, of course we're right. We were right all along. The conservatives were right all along. The problem with the conservatives is that they lacked a rational and scientific language for discussing their ancient, traditional moral and semi-religious. Uh, Arguments. Hi guys, yes, thank you for joining. I'm talking about the new right. So uh, if you followed me for a long time, you know that I uh, tend to work by class structures and group evolutionary strategies and various other evolutionary strategies. And um, I tend to start with the fact that gender, uh, that, that uh, the, uh, our, we're not identical, we're not useful, I mean, we're not uh, uh, equal, we are uh, compatible, and we're compatible in, across a time uh, preference spectrum or a time strategy spectrum, in the f sense that um, the female bias uh, is a very short-term temporal spectrum focused on consumption. The sort of brother or bias is uh, productively or libertarian oriented, which is uh, he wants to be able to uh, develop capital or develop skills or develop something to trade so that uh, he can gain status and access to reproduction. And the paternal or father or alpha figure is uh, trying to make sure that the tribe is long-term competitively sustainable. And if you look at the work done by uh, in, in research, and of course I, I, I like to promote John Haight, but um, in that sense John Haight has been uh, extremely successful in measuring uh, the moral of the different moral uh, in, intuitions each of us possess, how the left and feminine 
the middle and libertarian, or the brother and libertarian, and the um, right conservative and masculine uh, have the same uh, uh, moral basis. It's just that uh, we attach very different weights to them, whereas conservatives tend to, uh, to treat all moral imperatives uh, as a portfolio that's fairly equal. Um, libertarians tend to uh, uh, treat uh, hierarchy and uh, sanctity and purity as low, uh, lower concerns for them, and they tend to prefer new stimulation. This is normal for a, an emerging new generation to rebel against uh, the limits that are out there, but still try to add value. And the feminine or short-term version values very almost you know to, doesn't doesn't not only not value hierarchy and sanctity and uh, order, but uh, actually rebels against it and focuses almost entirely on um, focuses almost entirely on the. Uh, effort of each of us to uh, the effort of the, the left to to uh, focus on caretaking and uh, and uh, maintaining group cohesion. So uh, this is the this is the way that of course we've controlled alphas. So that's the gender specialization in uh, in reproduction or the basically the human the human division of perception into short, medium, and long time preferences and, that reflect the reproductive needs of women. The the uh, mating needs of uh, young males and the uh, the te the tendency of the males who have been successful at putting a tribe together at holding on to their herd of females and holding and maintaining their reproductive ability ability. Um, so that's the gentle time preference. The next layer we Isvinita Isvinita hey hey. Um, uh, uh, the next level of of, of uh, specialization is that we uh, now we have gender specializations. We also have coercive specializations. So each of these uh, groups developed a coercive specialization. Uh, gossip was the way that women learned to rally other males and women against alphas and control them. The uh, the um, uh, libertarians uh, work on trade. They lack neither sexual <laughs> sexual uh, resources to trade with, or power s structures to trade with. So they actually end up at production, and the conservatives end up working um, with uh, uh, force. Basically, they've built enough reputation and str strength over time that they uh, basically deal with force and order. So you uh, develop over time not only, uh, you develop specializations, in other words, uh, people who are very, very good in the deployment uh, and implementation of gossip, uh, morality, shaming, um, rallying, you develop uh, literature, ideation, uh, trying to get people to work together toward an end. You have people who, uh, like people like myself, who are very libertarian oriented, trying to generate wealth because, you know, we want to be able to uh, make our uh, position in the world. And you have uh, uh, people on the, uh, who have strength, who try to uh, organize the world, uh, specialize in the creation of war, force, order, law, um, and ex extract uh, revenues for, in exchange for it. So, uh, you know, this is what, this is uh, the, the specialization of coercion. Because there are only those three ways of coercing people. Gossip, rally, shaming, in other words, inclusion and, ex uh, inclusion and exclusion from opportunity. Trade, in other words, inclusion in opportunity to benefit or exclusion from opportunity to benefit and uh, force which is <laughs> uh, uh, circumvention of violence or <laughs> or the application of, of violence and so we have uh, so we have a time preference of uh, a progressive female um, uh, libertarian uh, brotherhood and uh, conservative masculine and in each of these uh, genders we actually create a coercive specialization gossip to control the alphas trade to uh, help the, to deal with the emerging layer of, um, of leaders and uh, 
forced to control the order and establish limits. Uh, so I always think of this as advocacy, practicality, and limits. And we've developed this uh, division of specialization just like bees have developed their own specializations. Now, um, this next problem we run into is class. Now, you've probably noticed, and I always say we can reduce this set of, base, set of basic ideas in the world to a very small number. You know, uh, as, you know uh, various estimates you see around is that the number of fundamental ideas is, you know, not much more than a thousand and maybe two thousand at the outside. And I suspect that if we understand the fundamental rules of the universe, it's a lot smaller set of uh, rules than that that govern the world. Um, Ms. Venetia, can you keep this, uh, da, da, da. um, uh, sorry, I have to ask them to keep the volume a little lower while I talk to you. So, um, uh, so every 10 points of IQ requires a different argument. So even if there are only, let's say, uh, 1,000, yeah, 1,000, uh, different cate categories of argument, there are, uh, in addition to that, um, for every 10 points of IQ, we need uh, a different way of communicating that basic idea or argument, theory, whatever we have, a bit of useful information. So even if we have only 1,000 or 100 basic ideas, we need um, X number of uh, classes, class, uh, class level addresses. Now these uh, every 10 points of IQ are important because they basically determine how we learn. You can learn through, uh, through ideation. People like me, we just absorb a lot of stuff and we create new stuff. Uh, we have people who are great synthesists. These people tend to be in the 130s, and it tends to take about 130 to synthesize new ideas, communicate it, and uh, write about it. A lot of writers and a lot, a lot of uh, people are up in that age. You have to be in the 120s to sort of invent a new machine, a new process. And we find that people in the 120s tend to do that. You have to be in the one teens to be able to uh, 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 perform research on your own, in other words, study independently. And you have to be in the 100s in order to be able to sort of be taught instructively by verbally. In other words, you can learn by instruction verbalism. Below that, you get into people who can't have to learn by doing. And believe below that, you get to people who have to learn by a lot of doing. And you, below that, you get to people who it's not so good um, unless they really work at it. Um, and so we have a class structure that that is uh, reflects our different abilities. And, you know, of course there's a lot of overlap, and when we're talking about classes, we can talk about genetic classes, how sexually desirable you are, how desirable you are for friendship, how desirable you are for associating with, how desirable... Uh, for uh, how low do you go? Well, you know, I always say below, I'm not really sure you're human below 70. You know, and I'm pretty sure we should, we don't want anybody below 985. Um, uh, uh, you can ask questions because I can see them as you're asking questions. I'm only going to answer ones that apply, though, to what the topic I'm, I'm covering. So, uh, the, so, so, uh, we have these uh, rates of knowledge, and we divide our, our organization into people who lead by ideas, uh, uh, lead by communicating, lead by um, uh, 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 organizing, lead by calculating or whatever, and lead by um, managing, and then down to doing. And uh, those doers, you know, do. They're the you know most there's a good chunk of the population most of it. So um, yeah, I, I got to be careful what I look at because see, you guys put in a little inter interject your humor and it it makes me go off into never in a land. Um, so we have a class structure and our organ and our organiz uh, and our human orders uh, fall into this as and our occupations fall into this set and of course there's a lot of overlap because we also have the other person problem like I said there's genetic social and economic class structures we also have this problem of personality so if you have a lot of impulsivity um, you have a lot of um, what's the problem. Uh, I, I always disagree with this, but the idea that you worry about things a lot, um, 
they, the, the, in psychology, this has an, a negative uh, con uh, connotation. And so I just prefer to say, you're the kind of person who worries a lot, obsesses about worrying, versus the kind of person who's confident and comfortable with the way things are. Then you also have the issue of openness to experience, how much new stimulation you need. Um, and then how outgo uh, autistic or solipsistic you are. I don't want to get into the big five, big six uh, psychological properties argument because uh, I've addressed that elsewhere. So in that, uh, to further that end, you know, we have uh, a class structure that's basically by IQ and then varies a lot by personality type. So if you're a person with 100 IQ, you can get a gra gradu uh, graduate from university because if you have the right personality, you can perform the same work as a person with 110 IQ if you have the, the, you have the patience and discipline to do it. Um, whereas we have plenty of smart people, and uh, I'm not sure I'm not one of them, uh, who have uh, all sorts of uh, wacky personality traits and they sort of inhibit us from performing uh, at the levels that we'd like to. There's a lot of very dysfunctional people who have very high IQs. Matter of fact, I, you know, it, it might be, that might be the, what allows us to have high IQs. So um, we have that class structure in place. So <coughs> now, for each of the for that for this uh, this uh, IQ class personality structure, all right, we have this. We have three specializations. Right, uh, gossip, uh, trade, and force. Uh, we have an uh, intertemporal bias, so the female short, libertarian middle, long-term uh, masculine. We uh, now we need arguments to talk to all these people, and so what we tend to do is we tend to create. Speak for yourself about what. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, we, we need to have uh, arguments for all these people. So. We have emotive arguments. I don't like that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's tough. We're just, you're talking about visceral reaction. We have um, uh, 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 expressionary arguments where it's what I think of as uh, rallying, shaming, all this uh, alt-right stuff we do. The, the stuff that's really about uh, inclusion or exclusion, uh, using guilt, um, uh, or using, uh, or as the Marxist lefts uh, Jewish do, is a uh, heaping of undue praise. In other words, you rally around somebody and you give lots of praise and somebody isn't worth it. You try to promote somebody over the interest over some others because you say they're better when they're not. Uh, this is so you can both both rally negatively and you can rally positively. Um, so we, we see a lot of uh, rallying going on in the next level. In the level above that, you start to enter into the class structure where uh, you've, you're actually trying to get into moral argument. Now, moral argument, unlike the emotional expression or like the original um, or like the uh, reactionary expression, moral argument begins to have structure to it. Um, it still uh, reflects cognitive biases, uh, emotional, class, and gender biases. But you have, you have what you have is you have this, um, this what we call moral argument. Um, above that, beyond moral argument, you start to get into what's called historical or analogical argument. At this point, you're starting to use evidence, not opinion, not expression, not intuition, but you're starting to use ev evidence. And when you use these historical arguments, you, are, you, you see this, you can see these levels, right, as I'm talking about them, you can see them in each uh, part of the political spectrum, people using each level of argument. And these level of arguments do correspond roughly to the class structures I'm talking about and their methods. So. Let's go to next to uh, we get we get a, a, a historical argument. Now we after that we get uh, uh, we somewhere in here we get rational argument. Now a rational argument isn't just analogistic. It's an attempt to say uh, this is con to to use the principle of non contradiction to say this isn't possible or that con can't be true. Now there's a, technically there's a difference between reason, which is much looser. And you're just saying, well, does this make sense? Is this understandable? And rationalism, which means, is this contradictory, uh, non-contradictory? In other words, is this possible given what we know? Beyond the level of rationalism, we start to enter the realm of uh, empiricism. 
Now, empiricism is uh, has a really uh, strange number of connotations to it, but what it basically is, is you've gone from trying to justify, which is what all those previous layers were, I'm trying to justify what I believe, say why it's within the group interest, say how it corresponds to it, to where you get to empiricism, where you're trying to engage in criticism. You're trying to see if maybe something exists, but how do I prove, that, how do I scrutinize this to make sure that it isn't constructed out of error, bias, wishful thinking, uh, suggestion, obscurantism, pseudoscience, or deceit? Uh, how do I know it isn't one of the falsehoods that humans are so susceptible to because we didn't evolve for the purpose of conducting truthful argument? In other words, objective argument independent of pers pers uh, uh, opinion. We evolved in tribes, in family groups, and in, when we, uh, when we uh, do, did the, going through this evolution, we evolved to negotiate based on norms, traditions that accepted the understanding of personality. We didn't evolve to speak truthfully, which is to launder those ideas from our truth. We have, this is why it took us so long to get to the Greek era where we develop reason out of, uh, and we develop reason out of juridical defense, right? I mean, that's what, where, where reason comes from. It comes from law, just like empiricism in the Baconian sense in England comes from law. So what you see is um, this, uh, this, uh, oh, my, my lunch is here. <laughs> what you see is, uh, uh, Yakuyu, uh, Yakuyu is uh, Ukrainian for thank you. Uh, Mojna is, please, can I, <laughs> can I? Um, so uh, you enter up into this, uh, shoot, did I lose my train of thought there? Uh, uh, no, empiricism. So when you enter empiricism, you're beginning to criticize, to not just say, look, you're trying to say, uh, use reason, uh, uh, rationalism, and, and empiricism to criticize, to look at it as uh, whether it's possible. Now, above empiricism, we get into what we don't think of today, but we call science. Now, science went through a very interesting change, and I gave this, uh, if you haven't seen the talk Bush, uh, Butch uh, Leghorn put out, uh, on uh, the failure of the 20th century and why, uh, in, in, for early part of the 20th century to discover truth and why, um, it's really reducible to the basic problem that just like we justified everything up until a certain point of time, once we reach the Industrial Revolution, the point, the point that got... Uh, point that we ex we expanded human cooperation, uh, human population sizes, the diversity of production, beyond human, you know, our understanding of the universe, large and small, beyond human scale. What happened was we ran into this problem of we we need to switch from justification in social science to criticism, just as we ju needed to switch from uh, reason rationalism in. Uh, in other fields to uh, empiricism, and w our, our guys couldn't come up with it. Uh, in other words, our philosophers couldn't come up with it. Actually, they did come up with it. They came up with, uh, uh, Brigman discovered it in physics, Brew discovered it in mathematics, uh, Mises discovered it in uh, economics, and this basic, uh, Popper discovered it in philosophy, or in the research, scientific, uh, scientific study, and that is that uh, you, if you can't articulate something, as a sequence of existentially pop, uh, possible operations. In other words, you can't say how this moves from this to this. What causes change in state is a sequence. You're ta we don't know that whatever you're talking about is not just correlative but completely wrong and whether it's existentially possible. Now, uh, a lot of people uh, railed against this because it was most prominent in mathematics because we had this hint problem of Cantor, where uh, Cantor brought in, a, he reawakened uh, mathematical Platonism. Yes, you're right. Uh, the problem is most people haven't made that switch. They still engage in justificationism because we live moral lives. We don't live scientific lives. We interact with people on a moral basis, on a social basis. Of course we haven't switched, you know, the, the public over 
to, uh, to uh, empirical thought or post-empirical operational thought, we haven't, m we haven't moved the population. We have moved them to statistical thought, to correlative thought. People can say that. Matter of fact, one of the things you'll notice when you listen to people talk, when they stutter, look at how, what they're doing. The reason they're stuttering is they're trying to take a Germanic declarative language of certainty and reposition it in modern language of statistical possibility, in other words, uncertainty. <clears throat> So uh, you'll notice once you start noticing that you'll notice how often everybody rephrases their words to speak probabilistically rather than with certainty. Um, so uh, we've entered the age of operationalism. Now the problem we have we have to enter into the reason we've gotten in it is the next level, which is uh, is objective moralism. In other words, in libertarians we have discovered it some time ago thanks to. Uh, uh, Mr. Locke and his predecessors, thanks to Murray Rothbard and his attempt to do it, his attempt to take it farther, and uh, thanks to Hop, you know, I, I criticize these guys, but it's not that they haven't contributed, it's I'm considered con criticizing that they're using the wrong method of argument, justification, to uh, explain what's a critical or, uh, analysis, which is a scientific analysis, which is that... Um, you can reduce everything to every positive assertion about uh, uh, social science into a statement of property rights because you can re reduce all natural law to a prohibition on the imposition of costs upon that which others have expent cost upon to obtain, whether that be a genetic. Uh, 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 you know, kinship, uh, mates, uh, whether it be your body, whether it be uh, physical property, it be the relations you have, the normative or the institutional structures, or even the traditions and myths. People defend their traditions and myths for a reason. It's their property. Now we don't, we say, well, we're not going to ensure traditions and myths like we're going to ensure physical property. That's where we differentiate between property in total, which is demonstrated human property, and property rights, which is that which we will collectively ensure. Uh, ensure. Now, this problem has been is that even though we've moved through this hierarchy of argument all the way up to the uh, you know, uh, rational, empirical, uh, scientific, in other words, operational, and objectively uh, social, social science, moral, and uh, I'll get into other properties another time, which is the issue of scope, which is really a, uh, just a technical form of criticism. It's what Popper got wrong when he talked about falsificationism. Um, when we uh, got up uh, to this position... Um, we, we enter this, um, how do I say this, uh, we haven't, well, we, like you said, we haven't brought people here, and it's actually pretty difficult. Um, so, uh, so what's happened now is we have, uh, we've just, uh, what's, what is an operation? Mental events, they don't have to be uh, 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 empirically observable, they have to be sympathetically testable. This is a really good question relative commotion. You're saying, what's observable? Well, in the physical world, we're talking about the physical world, we don't know the first properties of the physical world. We're trying to find them, and once we do them, do understand them, maybe we'll be able to create an axiomatic representation of the physical world so that we can describe each operation as it naturally occurs. Right? If we, do, we don't know that yet, and so we can't. So what we do instead is we say, what operations do we perform in order to obtain this measurement so that we know that the only information you're conveying to us is that which empirically present or actually present in reality, rather than subjectively intuited or inserted by you as error, bias, wishful thinking, da da da, deception. And so um, an operation uh, in the physical world has to be described as a measurement. But, however, when we talk to other people, right, when we talk to other humans, we're talking about social science. Again, this is what Mises almost got right. Um, yes, testable, st testable steps. Uh, uh, I don't like that because testable means repeatable, and it means, um, it means justificationary. And no, justification isn't right. What we do is we, tr we, we try to falsify. We criticize. So criticizable steps, steps that are open, Yes, for testing, but not testing for repetition, testing for falsification. So, Rob, I want to make that clear. And so, um, what we're trying to do is, is, uh, is say, um, shoot, I got a little distracted by your question there. Uh, somebody help me out. Uh, the, the net result is that um, we are trying to eliminate error, eliminate uh, the uh, I'm going to go on another 
tangent. So I got lost, and I'm apologize. I didn't take any notes, so I got lost in what was stream of, my stream of consciousness was. Um, so what I was getting to is that we have argumentative forms, and that what you see is these argumentative forms basically reflect uh, class abilities, and that what you see in the um, uh, in the new right, which is the the what I perceive myself as doing is changing from the old right, the hopeful right, the belief that if we just give them enough information, if we just show them away, everyone will join the aristocracy, the, the, the uh, aristocracy of everyone in the uh, Christian or Aryan liberty, uh, Anglo tradition. And they don't want anything to do with it because, like I said, it's not in their genetic interest uh, to pursue that strategy. So instead, what we have is we have argumentative structures at every 10 points of IQ or so, or every class level. And what you see today is people like me in the new, uh, in the new right trying to sh talk about force, common law, and absolute science, what I call truth, you know, uh, empirical truth. And below it, you have uh, a class of guys that are talking academically. You have... Um, uh, the people who are uh, into HBD and into the um, uh, the uh, uh, genetic differences between us, into proving that humans have been domesticated just like all other animals by our noble classes who used violence, organized violence, to forcibly domesticate us against our will by incrementally suppressing our ability to engage in parasitism and therefore uh, and thereby um, forcing us incrementally into more and more of our efforts being put in, into productive rather than parasitic activities to the point where in some civilizations, notably East and West, we've pretty much exterminated most of the lower classes that were uh, parasitic out of necessity because they had no little ability to contribute um, for personality and uh, ability reasons. So uh, we've domesticated man, we need to understand that's what we did, and that the reason that we're wealthy and other groups are poor, why we advance quickly and other groups advance more slowly or don't advance much at all, is because um, the, they have been, we've been more domesticated, and maybe too domesticated, and others have been less. And we can see this in all sorts of measurements. Testosterone levels is probably the most obvious one, um, but and uh, sec degrees of sexual maturity is the other most obvious one, and the degree the the, the category of sexual de uh, sexual uh, uh, dimorphism is the other one. So we can measure all these things, all the way down to how babies act in cribs, um, how pliable they are at what ages, how fast they mature. Uh, we can see all this in different groups, and so this is what has created the difference. Uh, be, be, between us, um, so uh, like I've said, there are we can map these arguments to different classes. So you're going to get um, the 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 despotic, you know, Nazi right down there in the working class who's very angry, and they're just going, they're just looking for any answer that justifies how they feel. You're going to get alt writers. Who are uh, who come in at multiple levels, and they're going to come in and and, and use ridicule and uh, humor and sarcasm. Uh, they're going to abandon the, pro, the the aristocratic prohibition on ridicule because that's what you know, we had duels before. You get killed over this stuff. They're going to um, they're going to abandon the aristocratic prohibition on libel, slander, sh shaming, and rallying, just like the left has. Um, there, you're going to have a group of people that come out and that are critics. Uh, they're going to use apply the critical method. I think of Ramsey Paul and those guys is that method. They have uh, criticisms, no solutions, but they have criticisms. You're going to have educators. You're going to have people like uh, Molly New and Tom Woods who come along and say, uh, you know, they still hold on to the a little of the hopefulness. You know, you see them slowly changing as they realize that the the wealth generated by the 19th and 20th century made a lot of behavior permissible that really isn't, and that we no longer possess that luxury, and so they're switching from libertarian, uh, uh, from benevolent libertarian to conservative libertarian, or to what I would say um, is our, you know, is uh, the new, the new right, which is still libertarian, but it's hopeless. <laughs> we don't place hope on it. And then uh, you're going to find people, academ uh, academics, in other words, not, not communicators, but intellectuals, like, um, 
uh, Ricardo Duchesne and um, who's the guy that does criti culture critique? Uh, oh, God. Um, you're going to find, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting it, McDonald. Um, uh, you're going to find uh, McDonald in there. You're going to find uh, uh, people who, aren't, who are still uh, private sector researchers because the kind of work we do isn't, isn't permitted uh, or certainly isn't socially acceptable, like HBD Chick on her research into clanism, clannishness, uh, marital, uh, marital techniques. You're going to find somebody like... Um, a J man who uh, is one J man and what's the other Steve Sue or whatever his name is that does the genetic analysis? Yes, J man. Uh, who's the other? Who's the Asian guy that uh, that does the uh, genetic research? Um, thanks, Butch. Um, uh, there you're going to find um, uh, the guys who do IQ research that are just well, you know, it's what it is. Um, you're going to find all these people and uh, in Paul, you know, basically these people like me, I couldn't get, uh, I don't know how I would, I mean, even though basically if you look at what I, t I talk about, I'm a progress, I sound like a progressive when I talk about institutional solutions, um, so, you know, even me, I, you know, I'm, I'm basically compatibilist. I'm saying we should just create markets in government, markets for everything. But, I mean, can you imagine trying to do the research I've done in a, in a university setting? I mean, I'd get coerced out of it. So, um, uh, so I, I can understand why, uh, you know, a lot of this happens in fringe movements because just like the church protected its revenue streams, you know, the academy predicted produces its revenue streams. The Academy can't tolerate um, disenfranchising customers, people who want, uh, we call them diplomas, but they're really, um, what did the church sell? Indulgences. Well, you know, we, we, of course our best academies prove smart people, but, in, but that's, you know, the part up here that we always talk about the good research, the good schools, but underneath that we we sell a lot of indulgences, and that the the, the profitability of those indulgences, diplomas, would be dramatically harmed if we were to uh, talk about uh, truth and the, the truth of human human differences, and uh, we and democracy would be uh, uh, democracy would be uh, dr dramatically undermined by the fact that. Um, you know, majority is actually a bad idea. We, why don't we have a market for uh, cooperation like we had in the in our under the Anglo model, where we have a house for different classes and the classes exchange? Why do we have this majoritarian democracy that uh, creates a r rule of monopoly ruled by majority? So this would all be undermined. This would all be undermined in the great promise that you can be saved by. Uh, by buying your indulgence from the academy, which has replaced the church, uh, you know that would be undermined. I, I can understand it. So uh, why, that's why the, the 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 university setting doesn't want it. It would create friction for t professors in their classrooms. Uh, the same reason that we don't teach truthfulness, uh, rhetoric. We don't teach history, uh, rhetoric, grammar, and logic. Um, nor do we teach uh, law, economics. Uh, and accounting and finance into the, uh, we don't teach those things in grade school, even though there's nothing in basic economics isn't comprehensible by a 14-year-old. You know, I mean, obviously capital flows and processes and these things are, measurement of them is one thing, but the basic idea is, is, is pretty simple. Yeah, Richard, I'll post this to YouTube and I'll put a, uh, I'll put the, um, uh, I'll put an intro and, exit uh, on it when I'm done. Um, uh, I, it's just easier for me if I have you guys to talk to because uh, otherwise I feel like I'm talking to myself and it's it, it, harder for me to work. So that's why I like this venue. Um, so, uh, so of course we're going to see this hierarchy. There's guys like me who talk, who are, you know, I, you know, I, you people, I think some of you understand this, but the reality is that um, just as reason was a a profound innovation over uh, allegory, just as uh, rationalism was a profound innovation over reason, and just as empiricism was a profound innovation over rationalism, and just as operationalism was a profound innovation, innovation over empiricism, you know, I think social science, in other words, what I'm proposing is that it's, that we can unify philosophy, we can, uh, uh, unify uh, philosophy and science and law 
and morality in biology into a single universal language, uh, discor discourse about it in a single universal language. You know, I think this is going to be have the same level of profound effect as did um, the each previous generation of innovations, and I can imagine that the consequence for humanity, if they were to, uh, they, we can. Uh, institutionalize these new ideas uh, will be as great as the innovations of reason, rationalism, empiricism, and operationalism. I think what we'll see is, a, is as great an innovation in human performance and behavior as what we've seen in those past gener iterations. And uh, so that's what I th why I think this stuff is very important. But getting back to the uh, different uh, new right, um, uh, what we have see in the right is we see people like me, people, you know, the uh, the theorists like me, although I, I don't know if there's actually anybody out there anywhere near what I do. Um, there's the, uh, the academic researchers, the communicators, the, um, the people below that who are critics, the people who that, that engage in ridicule, the people who below that engage in uh, emotional outbursts, and really these are just class structures using the argumentative structures available to them to conduct arguments. And I think that we're all, whether you want, I don't want to call us the alt-right because that's a class structure. I think the new right consists of all of these, the theoretical right, new right me, the empirical new right, the uh, uh, the informative or educational new right, the critical new right, the uh, the uh, ridicule new right, the alt right, and the exasperated or fringe, the exasperated or angry new right, which is our working class who pays the price for the failure of their leadership, their elites to uh, def protect them, which is stupid because you know they're the ones who fight. We don't. We just talk. It's those guys that uh, th those guys that fight that make the difference. We just give them license. So what was the next point I needed to make? Um, well. Uh, I want to criticize uh, monopoly government, in other words, our fran enfranchisement. Um, we, uh, we came out with uh, this movement of what we call democracy and the Enlightenment in an effort to seize power by the middle class to seize, or the emerging industrial classes and financial classes and middle classes to seize power from the land aristocracy who are no longer the primary determinants of, economic, of organizing economic production. Well, it's, so we created this great fiction that everybody was oppressed rather than everyone was domesticated, and that uh, now we had enough wealth to tolerate uh, and the, uh, the costs of attempting to include uh, the, the NRX is the new right that ought to be working on reform. Yeah, that's true, the monks and priests. Um, I, I got a neo reaction. You can look at it this way neo reaction, I always break things into Enlightenment class structures. Neo reaction, uh, Moldbug is a, uh, a, a cosmopolitan Jew. He uses critique, right? That's what he does. He uses criticism. Uh, he does try to come up with a solution, but his solution is anarchic and it's, unimpo and, and it's also kind of fanciful. Um, uh, Hans is a German. Trans tries to come up with. Uh, 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 a German nationalist solution um, uh, to return us to the prior uh, era when there were a lot of small states. Pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, he does it with Rothbardian uh, intersubjectively verifiable property instead of um, doing it with uh, uh, property in toto, in, in other words, demonstrated human property. In other words, he's too absurd, uh, concerned with uh, cr uh, creating uh, stateless decidability, which is what he and Rothbard are doing, instead of saying, uh, instead of creating, um, uh, instead of understanding that the problem is conflict and s suppressing parasitism so that we eliminate conflict and all the transaction costs that are associated with conflict so that we can work closer in higher density, produce lower opportunity costs, and seize them by a process of what you and I call competition. Um, da 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 da. da. Um, so uh, we made we told a big lie, just like uh, that was a, it was it was a well-meaning lie, but it was a big lie. Everybody doesn't want to be part of aristocracy. Every Enlightenment thinker lied. It was wrong. You know, Hobbes and Locke are sort of wrong. Uh, certainly, Rousseau was was uh, smoking something from Asia. Um, 
Uh, Kant was just trying to re trying to state restate Christianity as a uh, uh, Germanicized Christianity, which is really a combination of the ancient oath and Christian authority. And it's very Aryan. Um, he's trying to re uh, restate it as in rationalism without the mysticism. Uh, the, the Jewish Enlightenment comes along uh, in parallel with the Russian literary Enlightenment. The Russians use literature instead of rationalism or empiricism. Whatever. And the Jews come along with what we think they turn their legalism, their, myth, their conflation of mysticism and legalism, into a conflationism of pseudoscience and pseudo-rationalism. And we get the uh, Jewish pseudosciences. And because they're last, it's like any technology, you know, the first one, Creates all the disruption, and then the last technology that comes out tends to be the best one, or the one that the one that has the most market power. So um, they came along last, just as the as the uh, uh, as the industrial revolution was hitting mass scale, and this gave them both uh, this gave the pseudosciences uh, post Darwin especially control of the academy, control of the market, uh, the use of mass media. And the um, the uh, luxury of paying for all these uh, the wealth necessary to allow all these people to move up into the consumer class, uh, despite not demonstrating the behavior or forcing them to continue the behavior that was that had previously been necessary to join the middle class and uh, join the franchise. Then we brought in women, and then we brought in. Uh, women have the opposite reproductive strategy. They proceeded with, very quickly to dismantle the family. And then we brought in um, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, in order to finance war and the continental expansion, colonialism, we brought in fiat currency, which allowed us even more flexibility. Um, what we didn't do, what we didn't do, is, uh, is we didn't at the same time maintain the market for commons in government by each house getting its own uh, structure so that we weren't ruled by majority but by, by a market for exchanges. And what we also didn't do is we didn't require the ancient prohibition on ridicule, rallying, shaming, uh, libel, slander, uh, pseudoscience and lying in the commons that we had men had held each other to under threat of uh, death and so um, we didn't hold these new uh, underclasses uh, accountable to the same aristocratic traditions that made that forced us to use uh, mark, a market for uh, reproduction, marriage a market for production, the marketplace and a market for commons to cooperate between the, the classes. And so what happened instead was that we moved, we made the go government not able to provide a resolution for differences between these classes and genders. We forced argument, we forced honesty out of both the, the government, we forced deceit into it, and we forced pseudoscience into it, and we forced uh, the compromise out of the family. In other words, instead of gender compromise happened within the family and the family having one vote um, uh, what we did is we uh, forced we forced uh, uh, the compromise of the genders into the government and this is what we've seen is this huge set of conflicts resulting in pseudoscience and lies and uh, and the total and eventually the the surrender by the left which is going on now that they can convince us they must just resort to tyranny and the surrender by the right that we can mature these people into joining the aristocracy and our understanding that we have to resort, like they do, to force and violence in order to restore our two sides to compromise. Anyway, so what I might pr proposition is, is that we've, this is what the new right is. Our job is to use violence, force, uh, to demand uh, rest to restoration of the markets for marriage, for uh, production, and for commons, so that we trade between classes, we don't create false goods. Uh, I think we will calculate goods better than we can pseudo-empirically uh, calculate false goods. Um, and so that's the objective of my work, why I'm so profoundly uh, uh, focused on truth is because when you have truth, it, it gets very difficult to lie. And if you punish lies, deceit, pseudoscience, and whatever, when they are 
tried to use uh, to obscure fraud, then we can restore uh, truth and trade to the classes, and uh, we can cooperate because we're compatible, not uh, fight because we're all lying. Uh, and so that's the end of my sort of argument. Okay, so that's my speech. Uh, I have no idea how long that went. That was pretty long. Um, if you have questions, uh, please let me know what they are. I'm going to sneak a bite over here. Russell Moore. Hi, Kurt. Question. Can Spengler's work, The Decline of the West, be thought of as part of the German Enlightenment culture, whether it's literal? Well, yes, you know, um, one of the things you hear me talk about in truth is categorical consistency, and that means non-conflation. So the Germans conflate uh, literature and reason. Um, uh, they, 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 they somewhat resist <laughs> bringing religion in, but their moralization is at such high level, I would call that religion. Um, the empirical analysis is to launder those things from it. Um, what I see is um, I don't discount that Spengler's wrong. Um, in other words, I don't say he's wrong any more than I say Hegel is wrong. I say that these are inactionable ways that give you a, a little bit of information, false goods, right, Will? Um, they, they, they don't, they're... they're, they're uh, they're goods that uh, pretend to fill a market demand for understanding, and they're because they have so much falsehood in them, they fail. And by giving us a satisfactory answer, they do what Popper warned against, is they prevent us from getting the correct answer, the true answer. And this is what uh, I always my favorite one of my favorite art, uh, articles by Popper is his uh, sources of knowledge and ignorance. Well, how can there be a source of ignorance? Well, there can be. You can create an idea, the, the Muslim uh, idea of, uh, of uh, the completeness of Allah's uh, prophecy, um, excuse me, of uh, Muhammad's prophecy, and the, well, he, the, the completeness of this, the authoritarianism. You can create ignorance. Uh, you can create ignorance. Uh, uh, the other one I, I always bring up in, uh, in their society is... Um, the, uh, just a very interesting one is that they demand respect without earning it. And so this, uh, this, this limits your ability to correct people for uh, believing bad things. Um, yes, pseudoscience is a false good. Um, uh, I actually have the same problem with uh, the, the Enlightenment mythos of the arist potential aristocracy of everybody, uh, the Enlightenment fallacy that man was oppressed, um, uh, man wasn't depressed. He, we had rule, pretty benevolent rulers who taxed us like hell for the high cost and the high value of domesticating us like any other animal. <clears throat> what's this one? Uh, so, so I, uh, so, what's this one? Would you please expand on the discussion of the revolution compared to domestication? Uh, can you restate that in longer terms? Because I cannot understand it, Mr. Miller. Um, uh, Oh, shoot, I lost it again. So, the uh, I'll go back to, uh, we weren't, we weren't uh, lied to, we weren't domestic, we, we, were, we were domesticated. So, I want to get rid of all these sources of ignorance. Um, it's, it, in fact, this is, again, this ties back to our pr problem, our primary issue, intellectual issue, facing this generation, which is um, our era isn't about expanding human scale any longer, justification. It's about what do we, how do we get beyond human scale, and that means criticizing our imaginations, not criticizing our internal uh, experiences. Um, uh, Jay, I'll answer the question about Hop in a minute. Um, so, uh, so, we want to, we need to criticize these uh, different movements. I want to, I want to answer this hop question because uh, most of you know uh, I have, a, you know, I feel like hop gave me the answer, right? Now I knew when I was listening to Hans 
that he, he had a profound insight, but something was wrong. And what's wrong is his Kantian justificationism, his, criti his false criticism of Karl Popper, his, uh, and all this justificationary nonsense. On the other hand, if you look at his first real paper, which is on incentives, and you look at all the deductions he's made from the theory of incentives, you know, he's really proud of, of uh, argumentation, which is complete nonsense, because there's no contract yet. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know his his idea of uh, of rule of, of um, contractualism. Well, it doesn't handle the problem of incentives. So I see all these issues in Hans, and I've written quite a bit about this, and I've, I've I think I've thoroughly enumerated the criticisms. However, these are always Chris's criticisms for the excuse of property. Once you get to property, is the basic theme, a uh, basic principle of social science. In other words. The positive assertion, in other words, the right, of the negative prohibition. In other words, the general rule of negative prohibition, where property rights are the individual instances of positive application, then you understand that property rights can be used to articulate anything, at basically every concept, in, not only in social science, but in psychology, but in biology. Uh, and this is what I've tried to do, is I've tried to restate this scientifically instead of this nonsense German... Kantian bullshit and the uh, nonsense Jewish pseudoscience. You know, it, but if you look at Rothbard's what he Rothbard tried to do with his erroneous uh, limitation of property to intersubjectively verifiable, and you look at what Hopp did with, by abridging that and, and saying, well, let's let this uh, evolve after the intersubjectively verifiable, let's leave it open to contractualism instead of where I would leave it as say, well, it's universal rule, it doesn't need to be open, there's no contractualism at all. Um, uh, you can say, well, um, uh, you can say, well, everything Hopp deduces is right, I and mean, that's why he's right on immigration, for example. You know, so his use of this is all really good. What I don't like, in what the reason you see me attack the Austrian, it's not really Austrian, it's it's uh, Levivin, <laughs> because the people we call about as Austrians, and the Mises Institute sort of gets around, they're from Poland and Ukraine, they're not from Austria. Um, so they were part of the Austrian Empire, but there's nothing much Austrian about them. They're actually borderline, border people talking in borderland language. Um, with borderland ethics and borderland morality. So uh, the, the, the reason I rail against the pretend, pre pretend uh, the Polish-Ukrainians who pretend they're Austrians is because of this pseudoscience, uh, pseudoscience pseudolar, you know, Mises' cat categorization of, of, of logic for the purpose of criticism as a science for the purpose of justification. I mean, come on. Uh, uh, Rothbard's uh, use of... Uh, Rothbard's taking Mises' basic error here and, and just turn, moving it all over the place. Now, Rothbard's, just, uh, I've written about this extensively. Or Hop picking up on Rothbard's insights and, be, you know, he's, Hop's, Hop's one of those guys who's really loyal and I, he's, a, he's a bright fellow. I mean, uh, I, I learned a lot from him. Um, but he's gone off on this nonsense and he's just heavily, so heavily invested in it and now he's so basically retired. He's in a position where it's, it's a social group for him and he wants uh, to enjoy his social group because, you know, frankly, the, 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 the politically correct bullshit world attacked him. Almost, you know, I've, ha I've had this kind of thing happen. I know how bad it is for your health. And so he's sort of in this, in this, he's not really trying to advance liberty. He's trying to m maintain his ideas and, st and, and popularize them and maintain his friendship alliances. This is what he's doing. But me, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to repair the, the Jewish, uh, German, Anglo uh, fallacies of the Enlightenment and trying to uh, return them to their basis as law, as a... Uh, you know, the prohibition on parasitism is the basis of social science. Well, of course, libertarianism is a social thing for most libertarians. Is because they're out, the reason you become a libertarian, uh, you know, a, 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 a le, uh, any left-leaning libertarian, anything but the most conservative libertarian, which is what I consider myself. Um, you're doing that because you're, you're a social outcast almost all the time, and you don't want to pay for the commons. And what libertarianism is, is a way to say, this commons doesn't, uh, 
doesn't appreciate me. It doesn't provide the returns for me. Uh, I certainly have pretty high abilities, and I, I'm contributing, but this commons is actually working against my interests. And so this is who gets attracted to it, just like the people who move to the alt-right or to the left. These people go to those things because it represents their interests, just like uh, conservatives uh, go to that because they're familial and they're, it represents their interests. So, of course, uh, most of these things are social, and that's why you see me say a lot of the time on these on these feeds when I'm writing is that, you know, I don't need more friends. <laughs> I don't need a social order. <laughs> I, um, uh, what I need is, uh, you know, uh, what, what I want. And I don't want to, I want to ask questions about philosophy, economics, politics, and science. I, truth, I don't want to talk about girlfriends. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just not that it, it, I, I got friends for that. Um, so, yes, you're right. It is quite sad. Um, what's more important, though, is that we should enfranchise these people and bring them into the mold and ostracize the, the left ones, the, the, the excuse makers, like uh, Tucker's turned out to be. I mean, I, I really love this guy, honestly. He's a good person. I like him, but you know, he's just an excuse maker, like most leftists are. Um, whereas you can see Tom Woods migrating over. I mean, uh, he doesn't want to... He has various reasons for maintaining a slightly lower profile, just like Molly New does. Uh, but, you know, this is just what's happening. How do we become not domesticated? I don't think it's bad to be domesticated. Domesticated means that uh, doesn't mean that you're going to be um, weak. It means uh, it means that you're not impulsive. So, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's pretty hard to hold a shield wall. And it's hard to hold, hold formation. You can't do that if you're impulsive. You need to be trained out of it. Well, it's pretty hard to obey the common law. You need to be hard, pretty hard to be tell the truth. You need to be trained out of it. So the problem isn't that we need to be we need to be undomesticated. The problem is that we need to stop seeking the luxury of leaving the responsibility of defense of the commons, the tribe, and the nation to other people. In other words, we need to stop being free riders. We don't need to stop being domesticated. We need to stop being free riders. Nobody listens to Hop because even the things he's right about are great. The things he's wrong about, he's too proud of. I think I got all these questions. Um, Gary Knight, you, uh, I want to, I'm going to riff off what you say here because I know you don't quite mean this. You say, uh, excessive domestication, abundant capital, and the welfare state. Well, you know, uh, there's no resurgence going to happen. You know, this is more free, uh, what I worry about is free riding. You know, the, as intellectuals, you know, you know, uh, or people who are nerds or the kind of people who talk a lot, you know, uh, th there's a reason the guys who fight don't respect you or me or anybody else is because they're the ones who do all the work. Now, I view us as calculating. I was trying to come up with plans and options. And for me, you know, I, I know what my mission is. My mission is to produce a constitution, set of demands, um, a means of transition, a plan for how to arrive there, and uh, a means of insurrection, a plan for insurrection to raise the cost of not complying with that constitutional restoration to an uh, honest market order. Uh, uh, and, and and once I produce that, I'm I'm happy to throw Molotov cocktails, <laughs> um, but I've got to do my piece first, my part first, because nobody else has. Um, but you know, there's no no event, no external event that's going to save you. There isn't. The only, there's there's no other people who are going to take leadership, other than you. There's only uh, this is what I throw back on uh, the uh, the oven mitt crowd is that you know what. 
uh, the problem's you. And let's so you go out there, and you uh, you dis you take you understand how fragile the economy is, and you incrementally uh, you, you for a long period of time, three to nine three to nine months, you disrupt the ability of that econ economy to the point where the military has to take control. That's how you get you take action. Uh, there's nobody going to save you. There's no wishful thinking. You can't sit here and fantasize something's going to happen. This event's going to save us. There's no event that's going to save you. People are saved. People save themselves. Um, I'm a big fan of militia, again, mostly because... Uh, of the rocket-propelled grenade and the value of artillery. Um, my view is that uh, if you've got rifles, ammunition, uh, a few pieces of night vision, and RPGs, it's really uh, and you've got artillery anywhere near your borders, and you've got a couple nuclear weapons, a small state is basically, you can't do anything to it. Um, and so I prefer uh, that we uh, de devolve into smaller, we force the devolution into smaller states with more uh, progressive internal po you know, policies. Uh, we do most of what the, the left wants. We give people lots of support, uh, kinship support, and we reduce the scale of these uh, war machines because they're no longer valuable. I mean, you know, uh, if you're a, if you can break into ten million and five million dollar regions, and you've got one nuclear weapon and a militia with RPGs, I mean, a, a rifle is a few hundred dollars and a RPG is five hundred. You know, you're not talking about very high cost of defense. You're talking extremely high cost of offense. Hi, Exana. Miss you. <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Felicity, I don't understand believe. What do you mean? Any advice for young people to believe in this stuff? What did I order to eat? I ordered uh, a Greek salad, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, onions, and uh, feta cheese, and some risotto. Okay, I've got to sign off because uh, Lilia just gave me a ring. So thank you for letting me, uh, thank you for providing a, a willing audience for my talk on, um, on the class structures and how those class structures map to argumentative structures being used on the new right and how we should as a new right recognize we probably want to be called the new right and the new right should include all these different disciplines um, and we should recognize them for what they are is we've given up on the hopeful strategy <laughs> and become the resigned the resigned people and the new right no longer holds out hope we are in the pre we are preparing to issue demands or to get to civil war and i think that's our basic objective remember uh there's no imp majority rule doesn't mean anything truth matters and if we make we any a minority who enforces truth by violence wins thanks a lot guys